Oh, oh, oh no. What? D do we have fire trucks coming? Well, hello, Bob Dendry here, and welcome back to the channel. We are here today playing City Skylines, building the wonderful city of Lorikeet Valley. So it's been a while since I recorded. The last episode that was out last week, I actually recorded back in November before I um, went on holidays to England and, and had a month off uh, in January. But we're back. Uh, the new update, the new DLC is out, which um, looks really cool. I'm keen to get into that, but it's not what our plan is right now. Um, now, you might remember from our uh, episode last week that we have cleared and have been remediating this uh, patch of land here to build our university. We have our landfill site that is currently on its way to being empty, but it's still got a little way left. Um, so we're just going to let that run. I might increase it, in fact, even up to triple speed um, just to, you know, hopefully get that done. Um, but I wanted to have a chat about some changes I've made to the mod setup and the asset setup. So first of all, you'll notice the theme is completely different. So we are playing with um, now the Australian coastal Australian theme, I believe it's called. Um, you'll see it on screen now, which uh, looks really cool. I made a couple of tweaks in terms of um, what uh, gravel I decided to use, which I used gravel from the um, from the Railway 2 set, um, which of course surface paint has gone and removed all the surface painting I've done, standard. Um, and the water, I've retained the same water uh, from the Leviante theme that um, we were using before, because I think it just looks a little bit better than the uh, um, Australian theme. Not that there's anything wrong with it, um, I just liked it a little bit better. Um, Similarly, I've removed a whole heap of assets that were, you know, getting those, those really, like, flat, white um, textures, which just didn't look pretty, uh, very good. Like, some of that creator, I'm not going to name them because, you know, I don't want to shit on anyone else's work. A lot of their stuff looks really good. I don't know if maybe those were, like, some of their earlier works or something like that, so they, they're not quite as good. Um, but I've pulled those ones out, um, and I've added some different ones in instead, but, uh, they may be popping up maybe a little bit more down the line. Um, and yeah, uh, I think what I want to do is I want to change around how I'm actually doing this a little bit. Um, I wasn't really happy with how I was recording and how I was building in the... I mean, the last few episodes at least, if not the whole series. Um, like, if I think of how I build myself um, when I'm just playing by myself, I'm, I'm very sort of methodical and very deliberate in everything I do. But for whatever reason, I was just rushing through stuff, building stuff that probably didn't look that great. Um, so I'm going to do my best to not do that, to try and just work naturally how I normally would um, and hopefully capture that on tape. But, uh, yeah, so I've changed a few of the mods as well. But I've changed a few of the mods as well, just to some, um, different, um, like just some, perhaps some mods that are a little bit more, or better, optimized, um, including the Tree Anarchy mod, which has uh, stuffed up some of my trees a little bit. Well, not stuffed them up, but they're growing through roads and stuff like that. So I have the settings set up so it'll now actually delete the trees. Um, when they're overlapped by building or road or whatever, um, which is really good. It'll save on, you know, um, performance and stuff like that. But it just means I, I need to go through and I've done a lot of clean, cleaning up already, um, but it just means from time to time I might spot uh, some trees in the road and just have to quickly go fix that. So I hope you'll forgive me if that does occur. Um, but as I said, I've already gone through and done quite a bit of cleaning up already. Another thing I've done as well is um, switch over to the um, European rail. Um, so, so I mentioned I was having some issues where 
the overheads were just being weird. Um, like the wires were sitting way on top of the um, the gantries and the catenary. Um, so that was because um, the US uh, railway to US stuff is set up for higher um, wires, I believe, to fit like double deckers and stuff like that. Um, so I s- have gone through and switched it all out to use um, the European railway to instead which has the wires at the correct height now while that landfill is emptying out I just want to do a little bit of planning in terms of what I want to do with this university campus um, I've sort of been inspired but not entirely by um, the campus of the University of Newcastle um, which I actually studied half a degree at way back in the day um, it's a campus that is um, very much sort of green um, a lot of natural um, sort of wooding around the area and it's got a big sort of circular um, ring road as well that um, that's sort of the primary road through it so I, I very much want to try and um, sort of capture that sort of spirit but not completely obviously this area has been completely cleaned we do have the beach trail which I still need to rename um, very close by though um, which sort of does a little bit fit in with that theme that I'm trying to get at um, but basically I think we're going to pull out a little bit of residential here unfortunately um, just to um, sort of aid us reconfiguring the roads and stuff like that so I'm going to jump in and do that uh, what I want to quickly do is switch off dynamic weather though which I mean I, I, I quite like dynamic weather but it's hard to, to record and build and stuff like that when you're, uh, when you're using it sadly so a couple of things we want to do so probably these two blocks here we're going to be getting rid of. Apparently there is still thunder, so we do have a bit of dynamic weather happening. Um, we also have a bushfire starting over here, which is unfortunate. Oh well. Yeah, so these two blocks here, and probably this one as well, because we haven't built anything on this collector, so yeah. We're going to, unfortunately, um, resume those uh, those houses there but I mean we've probably purchased these at a decent price maybe we've been acquiring these properties over a period of time um, as we've been working on the you know remediation works we've got happening over here so I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that I'm just gonna dezone them all that probably will drive a bit of demand for residential but I think we have some spare sort of lots around the place so I don't think it'll affect the city that badly and we just want to do this as well this block here so hopefully we're not going to cripple our city but yeah we've got a fair few sort of vacant lots that people can move into and hopefully we've um, given them enough uh, funds from you know resuming the land that we are uh, or that they can afford to go and hopefully build the house of their dream somewhere. All right, so happy days. Our um, landfill is now emptied and we've deleted it. And it's now time to start demolishing all of these buildings that we've, you know, been purchasing. And we also need to relocate our biofuel bus depot. And I think a good place for it is over in our little transport campus over here. I think that makes sense. So we'll just pop it over there. No harm, no foul. That's a little bit ugly looking, but that's not the focus of this build. <laughs> we're going to be over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to start deleting the buildings that we've purchased. And we also have a couple of roads we need to delete. So we want to get rid of all of these 
sort of dirt roads that were sitting here. And we also want to take out Kent Street and Crest Street as well. Now, something we need to keep in mind in doing this is that we are, you know, we're going to be severely stressing these two roads, being uh, Lorikeet Way, Lorikeet, no, Birdsong Boulevard, sorry, and um, Green Street here. So we've gone from, you know, numerous uh, crossovers to just two. But that's okay, it's not going to be like that for long. Um, so what we're going to do, what I'd like to do with Birdsong Boulevard is I'd actually like to put a roundabout on it, um, which you might find a little bit unusual, but um, once again, I'm sort of basing this off um, University of Newcastle, which has a main entry with a roundabout. So I'm just going to move those rocks over there so they don't uh, meet their unfortunate demise. I'm going to quickly pause the game. Realistic, I know. And I'm just going to pop out this section of Birdsong Way. In fact, what I'm going to do... We're actually going to slightly realign this. So first of all, I'm going to put down our roundabout. So I'm just going to use this one unit road. And... We might make it a little bit bigger, in fact. So we'll do 10. As 12, I should say, I can count. Um, that is all correct there. And we're gonna do a three lane uh, one way, if we've got one. Perfect. And I'm just going to use the curved road tool. Just to create a nice round roundabout. I think that looks good. We're going to leave these crossroads in just while we're connecting up um, all our sort of entry roads. And uh, the reason we're doing that is to make sure that we don't sort of deform the roundabout, which can happen. So we're going to join these back up. Uh, try and keep it reasonably nice and sort of gradual curves like so. Uh, this road here, which is Scott Street, we're just going to bend that one around. It's not going to go to the roundabout. It's going to probably join up around about here. And of course, cross over onto the Scott Bridge there. And I'm just going to quickly use Network Multi-Tool just to, uh, if we use the Slope Tool, just try and get a nice, um, why are you not working? Okay, for some reason, the, uh, oh, um, okay, it's a bit, being a bit odd there. <laughs> for some reason, the, um, slope percentages aren't coming up. I also want to just pull this out a little bit so we can get rid of the, uh, 
that ugliness there. And we'll need to pull it up just a tiny bit as well. All right. Uh, so we'll start running again. And from there, we're going to build our main road into our university. Uh, which we're going to run with a nice uh, four lane road with some trees. Um, that's all we're going to need to do on this roundabout. So I'm going to remove these crosses here just in case they, you know, break things as they have the potential to do from time to time. And I just want to fix this up and make it a roundabout as well. Perfect. Thinking about it, these are quite close together. So I'm hopefully they don't cause any issues. But I also just want to get rid of the, uh, the traffic lights here as well. As we auto save. Yeah, not heaps happy with that to be honest, but I'm going to leave it for the moment. And um, what are these guys doing? Okay, that was weird. Um, alrighty, so. I think what we're going to do, we're going to take this road in a little bit further. We we'll straighten it out here though. And we're going to put our main administration building right here. switch over to some nice uh, just two lane roads perfect and we're going to lay down a campus area Thinking about it, um, these sort of lots of uh, buildings here, they can probably be bought by the university as well. So I'm going to design those. And we'll just get those deleted. All right. Now, what type of university do we want to be using in Lorikeet Valley? Now, I've actually been thinking about this a lot. And liberal arts college I think probably lines up more with the sort of vibe of Australian university which is good because we can't actually build a university campus area anyway not for quite a while so we're going to get down our liberal arts college going to stick our administration building right there and the Oriental Institute of Humanities I don't like it we're going to call it Lorikeet University. Far out. I can't type today. University of Lorikeet Valley. Because, um, I mean, I, I would still call it a university. It, obviously, it specializes in a different sort of lot of degrees than um, um, the sort of what you'd call the actual university in this game is, but we're still going to treat it as a university. It's, you still come out highly educated, so it makes sense to me. I'm just going to quickly clean up the... Uh, um, just this this yuckiness here. We're going to use... Oh, oh, no, we're not. We're going to undo that. We can use our smooth tool if we can. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to smooth. At all. That's interesting. What is happening? Gosh. All right. <laughs> we're deleting this. Um, and what we're going to do, we are going to put a nice level pad here for our university main campus building. Okay. 
much better. A little bit weird there, but we can quickly fix that if we just uh, lift our road up. Sort of. It's a bit weird, isn't it? It's not, it's just not behaving the best. Okay, I think that is nice and flat now. Perfect. All right. University of Lorikeet Valley. Fantastic. All right, so what have we got here? We've got dormitories, which obviously we're going to need a few of if we want to be a world-class university. We've got a study hall. In fact, let's, let's just place these down so we can have a look at them and then we can move them about or delete them if need be. So that's everything we've got available to us at the moment. So we've got our study hall over here. Got a drama club, school of education, dormitory and a groundskeeper. And what I'm thinking is we could probably put some dorms over on this little sort of quadrant over here. Um, so they've sort of got, you know, walking access to, to Scott Street and Green Street there. And um, sort of away from the, uh, the school building so they're not bothered by the rascally live-in students. So what I might do, I'll put down probably two or three dorms to start with. And I'm just wondering, probably put them this way at the moment I think and yes I know path or road access is required all over it and we'll just have two facing each other might space them out a little bit actually and we'll have another one here, which will back that one right as far as we can. Perfect. And as you can see, I've used Bob to switch in some Australian trees, which I think looks quite nice. And we'll get some path action happening here. Um, join up with these two roads, I think, and we will get some decoration on as well. perfect but that is not really perfect at all but I think we can make it work <laughs> um, I think Dexter Street probably doesn't need to go all the way in that direction but we do need to be able to connect up to our main, main building there as well though We'll move our groundscape, uh, groundskeeper building over to just over here. Um, one, because it fits there, and two, probably also would be like the, the maintenance people and stuff as well. So if, if they've got problems with the dorms, if they've partied too hard and broken a window or something like that, um, then maintenance is right there and they can come and assist. From there, um, I think the education School. we can pop uh, over here I'm very much a fan of putting things sort of off axis um, in these education type builds 
Um, I don't know why. I'm just moving that out of the way. That's not where it's going. Um, just because I want to probably flatten out some of this. There's also a couple more buildings that we haven't deleted yet. And they were still zoned as well. So fix that one up. Okay. What's that ditch? All right, so I think we're going to take out this height a little bit further. Probably not too much. Like, that's a bit ridiculous. Having cliffs like that. <laughs> um... But I will try and get this uh, education department on a decent angle while not causing insane cliffs. So that's not too bad. But we will get a little bit of smoothifying happening. If we use the right tool. So that is causing a little bit of a cliff, but I think we can fix that up. And not going to worry about this for the moment because I want to fix that as well. But so this is our education building. I think I'm actually going to uh, just rotate that. Makes more sense, I think. Um, I don't know. They both look like decent entrances, but this is, looks like it's supposed to be the main entrance. And I guess it makes sense when you're coming in from this roundabout that you would see this great big grand building there and probably just going to be nice and easy just for us to move the study hall and just place it across the road I think from the uh, from the education building but let's get out and move it and uh, do it the old fashioned way Now, what I would like to do from here is to get some big parking lots in. And I think being a, a parking lot in front of our education building probably makes a fair bit of sense. So we're going to get one in. Apparently I don't have all of the uh, all of the parking lot stuff because there's a lot more um, you know um, like easy ways to do this than doing one at a time. <laughs> um, what I might do is get a filler in uh, actually so we want to have a sort of a drive I don't think they actually use it to drive but we, we want to have a drive through here and get rid of that one there
all right so we've got um, some parking spaces there i will come back probably maybe in the next episode um and actually add some disabled spaces and stuff like that which obviously would be up nice and close to the um to the building but uh, we're not set up with those apparently i i didn't actually realize but i don't have them downloaded We might as well just slightly move this back and do uh, move this back off the main entrance so we can also have a footpath coming past. We've already got some people using this apparently. I mean, I don't know how you're getting in, but but you are, I guess. We've also got some students that are making their way across the grass to the School of Education, which has no power. So that's pretty cool as well. So I'm going to use a drive road, which I think we're going to connect up here. We'll use the curved road tool um, to try and get that in uh, 90 or thereabouts. 90. Ooh. There you go. Perfect. Um, and we don't want traffic lights there either. Oops. Don't want traffic lights there. Perfect. Might just move this back just slightly. Excellent. So it just joins up nicely there. Apparently we've now got power. Oh, but the most of the town or city doesn't. Again. Oh, oh, oh no. What? D do we have fire trucks coming? Okay. I'm sure the issue will fix itself. I'm just going to uh, turn around and walk away from that. All right, we do have our drama club as well, which we can probably nestle up here. Yeah, that's nice. So we've got a fair bit of room to expand here as well. Um, but I think it makes sense that we loop Dexter Street around. And the reason... Whoa. Okay, I was going to say, you're going very fast, and it's because we're running at double speed. <laughs> so we'll loop Dexter around the back of our administration building. It's going to take it out by one more, um, just so it lines up with uh, the rear of the study hall. We're also going to try and get it nice even level as well that's a bit ugly but we're gonna fix it all right and before we go too far um, also just noticing that beach trails on fire that's not great um, I just want to do a little bit of decorating and detailing just around our education building um, start to replant some trees um, as it would probably be an important um, goal of this university I guess without speaking for them <laughs> that um, they'd be wanting to get some trees and some native trees back in the area obviously we've deindustrialized this area so it makes sense they would be wanting to get some natives back in I mean, that's definitely a this is fine moment. 
just just biking through the uh, bushfire. Okay, and for the finishing touch of this sort of first stage of our campus, we need some public transport to serve the area. So we do have a train station. Well, we've got one here and also over here. So it's probably midway between the two stations, to be honest, which is not ideal, I guess. Um, but we do want to put in a bus anyway. So what I might do is just have a look and see if we can uh, get an idea of where our um, students are coming from. So obviously we've got some coming from the dorms. Where else? I mean, there's not that many students at the moment, I suppose. Um, we've got some coming all the way over from Garnet, actually, which is interesting. None are coming from the train stations at the moment. I suppose that makes sense because it's a long way away. But I think our best option is to actually go to this train station over here. We'll call it the High Hills train station, I guess, since it doesn't have a name. Um, and yeah, the bus can sort of pop, pop over here, pick up the students and loop back through to the university and probably drop off you know, just in front of the main building here or something like that. So we'll get a bus route in there. So we'll have it pick up yeah, right in front of the main entrance there. Um, and probably just go straight to the university and not really stop anywhere, I think. Just a nice, simple trip there. And let's have a look. So we will call this 120 University Shuttle. We're going to start off with probably one vehicle at the moment, one or two, perhaps, because um, I, I don't actually know what demand there will be, if any. <laughs> um, but, which is being a little bit weird at the moment. Let's try that again. Interestingly, I don't have the option to select vehicles, which is a bit weird. Um, let's select types. I've picked up a whole load more ride vehicles, as you can see. I'm just obsessed with it. I love the packs so much. Um, and I think we want a nice, just a small vehicle. I can't remember. I don't think we have actually have the, uh, the campus buses. So we might just go with... I'm, I'm thinking a bus with like 50 or less capacity. This one. Interestingly, oh, here we go. Okay, so let's try for two. being very unusual at the moment. We also don't want biofuel buses. Why are you putting biofuel buses on? Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Stop it! Okay, clearly a problem there. <laughs> um possibly related to the new functionality in the 
um, like with being able to select service vehicles. So we'll just let it do its own thing. Next up, I just want to add a little bit, just a tiny bit of um, commercial, um, you know, just like restaurants, stuff like that, that the students would potentially be using, um, you know, to get their lunches and stuff like that. So what we'll do, we'll just grab this node, join it up here. And I will also connect up there. So we'll just line those up nice and easy. And what I want to do here, we're just going to use our multi-tool. Going to add a node. So I'm going to add a node here. And here we're going to get rid of that extra node that's just sitting there. And what we're going to do now is to use uh, traffic manager. Maybe. I'm just trying to remember. Uh, no, actually, we need to use no controller. We're going to add crossings. make sense as well for us to move this path. I will fix this, don't worry. <laughs> and just uh, bend it around there. Perfect. We've deleted a few trees. So we're going to fix our mindless destruction by adding a few more trees in. In the area that we've, uh, we've freed up here now. Perfect. Looks nice. Uh, there's a little bit of weirdness here. I wonder if we can fix that. Straighten it up or something like that. Flatten it? No. It's probably something that can't be fixed, I guess. But yeah, that's a nice... Come on, use the crossing. Oh, come on, guys. Um, what I would like to do as well... Um, we might just use our uh, adjust, uh, zoning adjuster just to, if we can, oops, just disable the zoning on this road um, so that we can get just shops facing away from our sort of main road there. And we'll pop a few in here and a few in here as well. I want to check on our water and stuff because it's probably, yeah, <laughs> in a bit of a state since we've uh, rerouted roads and stuff like that. So I might quickly fix that up as well. So everything's flowing under the road as it should. I just realized I've also cut off the half the town from probably water and sewage as well. So I'm going to quickly pause uh, while I fix that. And let's unpause. And hopefully that more or less fixes it. We just need to get some water down here for the education building. Perfect, and we should have now um, just some light commercial here. Might be some just regular shops and stuff like that as well, but um, yeah, this would mostly be restaurants and things like that for the students. Okay, and to finish off, um, I would like to get a secondary access route into the university um, in case, you know, you have an accident on this roundabout or something like that and you need to escape. Um, Probably, obviously, we've got some somewhat harsh um, sort of landscape here, which we will need to correct. Um, I think probably our best bet is going to be between these two intersections here. 
Um, obviously in order to make that work, we're going to need to upgrade um, this road sort of network here, which it's probably overdue anyway for that to happen. Uh, but what we need to do, so I want to upgrade this road through here. We're going to need to use a one unit road. And I'll just quickly turn off collisions for this bit. Didn't work because I didn't turn off collisions. And the rest of the roads, we will just use a regular two unit road. Now let's turn off Anarchy as well. Uh, that's probably everything we need to upgrade right now. Green Street here, actually. Just up to uh, Lorikeet Way. Perfect. So that's probably enough upgrading for the moment, but we do still have some patches of these old, um, sort of almost unsealed asphalt roads. But uh, it is what it is. Um, obviously, as we continue to develop this area, we will probably look to upgrade those to, at the very least, these little skinny uh, one unit roads that we've used on Green Street. So let's get that connection in. And I'm hoping we can do this without too much hassle. If I have a look, it is quite steep. Um, let's see if we can fix that with the network multi-tool. I don't want to remove a node. I want to use slope. And it shows up now. How strange. 11% still very high, but it will have to do um, unless we were to raise up this intersection here. But I don't think we need to do that. I just want to check and make sure our bus is still going through the main entrance. Excellent. Okay. Well, that is going to be about it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. As I said, I've tried to do things a little bit differently than how I have been previously, um, but I'm always open to feedback. And, you know, if you think I could do something differently or less or more, just let me know in the comments and I'm happy to take that on board. If you've enjoyed this video though, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you get a ding to your device when I post my next video. Links to my social media are in the description. Please get on there, like, you know, follow, do all that good stuff. There's also a link to the Discord, so if you want to have a chat, get on there and I will answer probably most of the time to be honest. But yeah, that's about it. So to let you know, my name's Bob Dendry. This has been City Skylines, Lorikeet Valley, and until next time, see you later.